have no bones. Welcome to Sewing in Bed, where today I am finally going to work <sighs> on my stays, my 18th century stays, my poor, poor stays. In all these, in all this time, they have just stayed the same. <laughs> you can leave now if you, if you wanna. I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you. I'm, I'm sorry. When I started this project, all of these bones fit perfectly, but now, now for some reason, this bone right here is just, uh, suddenly, randomly, just too long. What? 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 Are you... what? This should have been obvious, but, um, it was, it was the wrong bone. It goes here. See? See how that's? the right length. So while we did solve the mystery of where that long bone goes, because it is here in its long bone home where it fits, we do have a new mystery called where did, where did this bone go? Sir, where are you? You have no bones. Last we were, I was doing the binding, but then I took the foundations revealed, um, course on stay making and I learned a lot of like handy tricks on how to get this done like more efficiently so I went back and I started you know um hand tacking down the raw edges with like really loose whip stitches like this and that was like mentioned in the course as a way to like you know keep everything more together and that this was seen in a lot of excellent stays and I was like you know what might as well might as well try it no harm in doing a little extra hand stitching when I've got all this other hand stitching um, I'd also put in like one grommet as like a fake attempt to see how things were looking and then I was like no I don't want to do grommets I'm gonna do like hand hand done buttonholes and I got this embroidery floss for it no idea if this is gonna be enough that's a future me problem but yeah so I started that I also um tacked down the front piece around this bone in the center front and I like marked off the spaces for my eyelets so they're right up against this front bone so what will happen then is when you have the thread in the eyelets and it's pulling towards you know the open space instead of pulling into more fabric and then warping like it would if you placed it right here in the middle it's placed right against this bone so there's no place for it to warp so as you can see with the position of this eyelet there's no more place for it to go besides directly into the bone so that'll sort of stabilize it more all the tabs are done on this half and i'm super excited i can't decide if i want to start um floss doing eyelets yet i think i might do eyelets next because then i can actually try this on but yeah um i'm not going to do top binding yet because of that missing bone no idea where i even got these bones though so will i be able to fix it i don't know that's a problem for future nami but it's done um it's not perfect but perfect is it necessary done is better than perfect we are living by those words this year and yeah i'm really proud i did this by hand um since it was a wide ribbon i ended up um like only putting a quarter on the outside and then folding the rest to the inside so it can't be seen but yeah pretty exciting stuff i'm really happy that i did it um all right now to keep sewing some more Huzzah. All right, we are on day two of working on the stays and this is the other half, which I have yet to do anything for. So the immediate task that I have is to sew it secure in this front bone. And then I have to um, sew right here, just a few quick hand tacks to keep this bone from sliding down. Right now there is just, um, well, there just was a pin in there holding that in place so that's ah there it is that's fine everything's fine pin don't don't leave sewing pins in your bed and then and then uh the other thing is that I have to sew along this line to prevent these bones from um sliding up 
so we are on day three of working on the stays again and I am doing the binding for the second for the other half and I'm currently at one of the finicky little tabs and I gotta say it's it's it makes so much more sense when you're like all right I just need to shove enough of the fabric in there to make it like have enough to go over so literally it doesn't look the prettiest but this is how you bind tabs at this at this corner you shove a little bit more of your binding up in there and then you just sort of like make sure it goes up and tack this down all the way around and then you continue on like normal this is important because you'll see here you want to make sure you get your full like weakness point in that fully aligned and it's not going to flip neatly if you don't you know go all the way around like this so you gotta and then the end is you're gonna get some crumply nonsense in the middle there but that's that's how tab binding works so i was recording some podcasts and sewing and i made a lot of progress got all of the front of this binding sewed on for the top and got it pinned down in the back great news I have just enough of this pink ribbon to finish everything because I have already finished this half right here and yeah it's she looking good I'm so happy she's a bit wrinkly in parts but frankly I'm remember remember done is better than perfect done is better than perfect and like see right here this is something that would have driven me up the wall because I had to use darker thread but you know what at least it's done and I can wear it and make fun things to go on top of it. And there's this little piece of fuzz on it. So the binding is all sewn and Mingle's just sitting here dangerously, but I marked out the eyelet placement beyond just that first silly, silly metal dude. And now it's time for me to attempt to bind these by hand. How will it go? I don't know. We're just gonna do our best. I had given up on eyelets for a bit because I couldn't make them stay open, but now I am uh, doing doing this in an effort to make them cooperate. Just uh, stick a chopstick in it and hope. Um, yeah, I basically just consulted my chat and I was like, y'all, how do I do this? And they said, put chopsticks in it because awls aren't thick enough always. So yeah, uh, this is where we're at. Um, here's to hoping they'll stay open so I can sew them. Um, this was like my first attempt and it didn't quite go because it's not quite open. It's all right, well, we're gonna get there. All right, here they are, the first set of completed eyelets. They're not the prettiest, but they are real and they stay open. And frankly, that's, that's really all we can ask for in anything. Well, probably not in anything, but like eyelet specific things. Check it out. Look at them. Doing the thing. Good job, me. Now to do this three more times. Ugh. So I don't know what it is about marking the like side of eyelets for spiral lacing that have the two close together on the top and the bottom, but there is something about it that makes me place these wrong every single time i i swear this this probably looks a whole mess and it is it is indeed a whole mess because i also marked on the right side of my fabric like 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 the ballsiest lady of all time but i but i was wrong but um oops too late this is on the center front it's right there but so um for reference this is the next correct hole and then this one and then this one and then whatever the heck these other dots are. Mistakes. Attempts to do the thing. It's... It's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Something truly historic has happened today. It is Saturday. It is August 20th, 2022. And I have finally finished all of my eyelets. Are they perfect? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Look at, look, look at this weird string. Look, look at all these. They're not even the same length. Are they even dense enough? I have no idea. What, what is still a whole ass grommet? But, uh, but I remember kids, done is better than perfect. 
and uh, she sure is heckin' done. Um, next step is to actually find my um, lacing cord, because I have like a really thin, like, quarter, one-eighth inch cord that I can use for this, and then I have to get that tied in. But, Eyelet's done. Done! I'm so happy. I apologize. I slightly lied to you guys. Next step is not the lacing cord. Next step is technically this, but also the lacing cord. Technically interchangeable. We're just not doing the lacing cord because I have to get up to find that. And this is right here. So there is the technique where you add little strappy strappies to these tabs. And then you add the little, you add a little loopy loopy on this end like this. And then the strappy strappy goes through the loopy loopy and it crosses in the back. And then it comes to the front and it it like hooks here and I got giant hooks and I got strappy strappies so we're gonna sew those on and hopefully the right configuration because I do not have the laces and I have not tried this on and I have you know stays are adjustable sizing I can just loose them laser lace them looser oh my goodness English is hard Okay, so I finished sewing on the first little strap. I uh, haven't knotted it off yet, but I basically just like whip stitched and then like back stitched and like just kind of like willy nilly stuck my needle in and out, making sure I only caught like the, I didn't catch the fashion fabric, but that I still caught like, you know, truly into the seam. And then at the top here, I made sure I caught into the fashion fabric underneath, but not into the binding around it. So it would just be, you know, you want this to be secure. It's going to be taking some pressure then I have this corresponding the little like loopy loop on the back and what I did was I cut the piece initially to be like like both of these were even but then because I don't want raw edges I cut this side short a little bit so when I actually show sew it down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this over this and then sew it like that like that wow fingers hard but yeah I'm gonna sew it like that it's kind of wild but we did it look it's strap attached loopy attached what are all these funny discolorations um that you could see on camera that you can't see in real life we're just not gonna think about that best part uh we got two um which the second of which I'm going to show you shortly except it's sitting over here and I have to wrangle it without dropping things and ta-da that's two strappy strap loopy loop ah shit that was the opposite also um in other news um the needle I've been using for this whole project this poor poor dude is look at this lad all all bent and you know what normally people would be like hey you should throw out that bent needle and you know what I say to that no, because because I bent this in the way that I apparently like to sew. So uh, good enough, and we're just gonna keep it. This is this is my new designated needle. Um, don't mind don't mind the state of my hands. They've been they've been doing their best. Um, next step is to find the cord, but I don't feel like getting up. So uh, maybe in another month. I joke, but like that is the way this project has been going. In related news of uh, other side projects that had to happen because of this, um, so this is my little leather thimble. I like this better than the metal ones because uh, it gives me a little place to stick out my long, long nails. And I'm not getting rid of my nails. But so this guy, the adhesive that was holding it, um, just sort of like gave out and started opening and that made it really unhelpful. So I had to also take a little pause to do a tiny little back stitch to push, to hold this dude together. But, um, he's good now. Look, all solid. Doesn't want to budge. What a good lad. 11 out of 10. Use thimbles, probably. We have had another time skip because my henna is faded to that weird stage where it looks concerning and my hands look vaguely ill. And also I have a new bedspread because I, because I, yeah, I got bored. And so, but check it out. The cording is here. So the back is permanently laced up like this. So I basically just tied off the cord in these pieces. The straps are on and they're like loop, gonna be looped through the back. And I marked the, sec the placement for the hooks on the front. And I also 
put a little aglet on here. Did I end up having to bite the edge down because it didn't quite fit? Yes, maybe. Um, did I use my teeth instead of actual pliers? Yes, maybe. Um, don't at me. It's 10 p.m. and I don't want to go downstairs. So this is what I'm going to do. Hey, <laughs> it's working. That's what counts. I've managed to sew the tiniest eyelids in the world, but it's fine. It's all good. That was intentional. So I'm going to sew these hooks and eyes now and then she'll be done. I should probably technically line her, but that's a job for future more motivated me who probably will never exist. no one I didn't actually film an introduction for this video but here's a closing for this video is it the same outfit that I'm wearing for the introduction for my next video yes maybe you can't you, you don't know this for fact I didn't just tell you this and give away all my secrets what are you talking about um but uh TLDR I finally have some 18th century stays they held up really good um I wore them for my first ever historical ball hosted by the lovely modern Marie Antoinette it was Fates Lay Autumn in Milwaukee and it was amazing and well the stays held up really really great the one thing that I've realized though is that they are bound with like a really soft ribbon. It was the leftovers of ribbon that I used on my Nui Harime costume in 2014, which was literally eight years ago now. The endless uh, cycle of time aside, um, we do have some bones that are, you know, peeking out and like kind of worming their way out of the tab binding because of that. So what I'm going to do is undo that section of the tab that is doing the little, uh, bone worm and I'm going to sand those bones down a little bit further like probably like a whole eighth to a quarter of an inch and then I'm gonna sew that um binding back on and then then here's the exciting part I'm going to do something that's not quite historical but will be effective I'm going to floss an 18th century stay or rather the specific bones that are being brewed right now so I'm going to floss those bones into place and hopefully they won't try to wiggle out anymore and if they do I'll just you know keep patching them that's the point of stays and yes these are cute and pretty but like they have like the shoulder strappies and stuff so they're not really like meant meant to be like outside stays like fashion outside stays so like I can make it work although I do think I'm gonna eventually want to make like a little fichu to wear around the neckline so it like hides the fact that like it's not quite fashion strap stays future plans that I talk about that probably won't happen for another five years because that's the rate that I work at right now but I hope you guys enjoyed this video um and uh have a great day have a great month have a great year